Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101 out here with Wilfred Manus Outdoors, and we did a couple videos that weren't knives. We're going to do one that is long overdue. I've mentioned it, I've showed it in a couple videos. We haven't done a, a, a test on it yet. This is my, if we take dark timbers out of it, this is my favorite knife that is not my design. It's the one that I carry and use the most. And part of it is because I, I love the factory sheath so much. So what we're going to be taking a look at here today is the Bark River Cub in CPM 3V. And this to me is like the perfect uh, companion knife, primary knife, belt knife. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's right there in the middle and it freaking looks awesome and the handle is awesome. So if you want to find out more about this knife, don't go away. All right, so as always, Chris just kind of slaps something in my hand and says, hey, uh, cut wood with this. So well, that's what we're gonna do. Um, uh, the initial of it is that the handle is pretty awesome. I like it. It almost got like a, I don't know, like, it reminds me of like the old school USMC fighting knife kind of design to it, which is cool because it's got a lot of a flat. bar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cutting up. I'm not saying, it looks like a Tom Brown tracker, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold. <clears throat> but I mean, it's got that kind of basic design, which is cool because I got all this flat surface area of cutting area right here before it goes under that belly, that little curve, you know. So that's going to be nice. Um, a little bit of a drop point. Convex but, edge. Is it convex? I thought it was full flat. Well, it every, is convex. Everything Bark River is going to be convex edge. Oh, really? So let's get to it. Let's see what this knife can do because the handle is pretty decent. All right, so I think this will be a decent little test. Uh, the order of the day today is going to be short and sweet. You know, we're just going to do some basic tests that we always do, just to see how the knife feels. Uh, let's see. I think everything's wet. Yeah, I'm waiting for this hell winter to be over. Ah, it's just a little bipolar. One day it's 50, the other day it's four. So that's nice. You can see how wet this wood is. It's all the way into about here of the wood. I don't know, it's kind of dry, but nice. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more out of it. Obviously, 3, 3V, it's not gonna roll, but I'm checking it. And the reason why I'm doing it right here is because this is way more sensitive than <clears throat> my fingers because my fingers are calloused my edge retention already but your neck's very sensitive what Just rubbing on your neck okay oh my how about my eyeball chris you know you're pretty famous for that jackass i mean look at this i can put this thing directly on my eyeball and not cut it so you know that this is a false edge um I'm not going to do it with this one because uh, Bryce sharpened it and I would have to wear an eye patch. And I don't think I could pull off the, the Snake Plissken look uh, quite as good as he did. <laughs> when did I do that? Oh, yeah, uh, I years did do. ago. Was that the, uh, that, that was the uh, tops to home of field knife, wasn't it? Yeah, I received phone calls for that. <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> Sensitive bitches. No, like, never mind. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> All right, so obviously I can't harp on it enough. The, the edge retention of 3V is just crazy. Uh, I am one of those guys that Chris talks about that kind of complains about 3V because if I'm working all day with this thing and I accidentally get it a little too dull, they are very hard to sharpen in the, in the field, in the field. <laughs> Depending on what you bring to sharpen your knives. Keep it sharp. If you have 3V, keep it sharp. Just maintain your blades, touch it, feel it. <laughs> Make sure that it is not going too far because they are hard to sharpen in the field. Well, that green elephant worked good because it's got that higher grip. Yeah, I am not packing that thing in the woods. This thing's too big to pack. Somebody's got to pack it. 
You're packing it. I'll pack it. With your 95, yeah, put, add that to your 90 pound pack. I need one of those uh, things Canadian Prepper reviewed. It's like a, it's like a rickshaw backpack thing on wheels. I want you to get that VanQuest pack. Yeah, I can't wait to do a video on that thing. That's one of the packs that not really fitting my style. My, my style is more traditional, but God, I almost can't wait till you get that pack. That thing looks really nice. You know, when I'm doing <clears throat> tests like this, I'm looking how smooth, well, first of all, how easy the grind is to find, which isn't bad. I'm looking how smooth the, the blade runs on the wood. Given that this wood's a little damp, a little bit of stuttering is definitely permissible. But other than that, it is extremely smooth. Balance, weight, feels okay. Well, okay, that's the thing about 3V that I'm a pretty huge proponent of, is that they are just absolutely feather-like. You know, and this thing, this is a pretty thick knife. You would think it was a neck knife the way it weighs. If you just had somebody blindfolded and you put this in their hand, you'd think it was almost like that. That's one of the big things about 3V, is that it's super light. That's definitely a plus to me. See, I've never noticed that. Light? Oh God, yeah, I can tell I almost, I almost cussed. <laughs> you can definitely tell the weight difference between a 3V knife, it's super light to me. All right, so let's do a little bit of notching. <clears throat> Get outside the blood circle. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that Jason's harping on it now. That's just hilarious to me. You know, you guys have seen these tests over and over and over again, but it's what we do to just kind of so set the standard in testing so we can tell the difference between knife to knife. It's a little wide, but it'll pop. A little safer. And there's two reasons why I like doing this notch on camera. It's two because if I'm gonna roll an edge, it's gonna roll it on that part because that's pretty damaging to a knife that's not set up correctly, I guess I should say. And two is because I can get in here with the tip with a little bit of thumb assist to clean that knife up or I'm sorry, clean that notch up. And that allows me to use more of the knife on the same test. So coming up here using a thumb assist, it is pretty squared off. Not exactly the most comfortable thing in the world, but how often are you doing that, I guess I should say. Pretty clean. That's really, really square up there. Not bad for certain situations. Not great for certain situations. Scraping, ferro rods, things like that. This knife's gonna eat that up. Thumb assist and carving, eh. So that's not bad. Pretty clean. Didn't take too long. Nice, nice. Let's do one more and I, I think I'm be satisfied to call it on that one. Very good chewer. Nice. 
nice, nice, nice. Not bad, little little flat notch. Flat notch and a square notch. You know, those are the things I could do with this. This knife is has a lot of utility in it. Okay, so all those notching, let's check the edge real quick. And it looks awesome. It looks awesome. You know me, man. I'm not one to really pay too much mind to that. But yeah, but it looks awesome. But it looks awesome. Right on. Yeah. Didn't do anything to that edge yet. And I'm just letting the knife do what it wants to do. Pretty much, for the most part. Stay up all night, eat junk food. Yeah. Right. Watch Netflix. Alright, so Chris, uh, been playing around with these sure strips that he's gotten. Uh, I've been messing with them a little bit. Uh, the key to these things, in my opinion, just for my use, is to get a pretty good surface area going on. That'll take a spark a little bit easier. If you just lay these things out flat and expect a spark to hit, it, it will, but it's going to take a little bit longer. Let's see what kind of ferro rod we got here. Uh, not good for the scoop. All right, that's fine. Quit doing your bush crap. Shut up. And just make strike the freaking rod. Shut up. Can't have any technique involved, Chris. Jeez. Sorry, I know a little bit more than you. God. <laughs> well, check the rest of this. I mean, because not all bark rivers really come that sharp. Sometimes you got to tweak them a little bit. They're like right in that sweet spot where if you don't want it sharp, you can... So I'm pretty much going up and down the entirety of the spine. That's an incredibly sharp spine. Yeah, that, that's more than like my Bravo 1. I had to tweak my Bravo 1 a little bit to yeah. sharpen it up. But. These sure strips are pretty nice though, man, just for a wallet tender. And that's what they're meant for, you know, they're meant to just throw in your wallet and forget about if you need them, you need them, you know. But if you want to go ahead and smush some uh, Vaseline soap cotton balls in your wallet, you go on with your bad self. Yeah, it's I'll put nice these in nice. here. Those are nice. Yeah, this is a nice, nice blade, man. I like it. You know, one thing that I didn't mention yet is the fit and finish of this. I mean, it's a bark river, so you guys should be expecting some quality there but this one kind of stands out to me i love the pins the mosaics it's really really nice god that is a super sharp 90 degree spine but the handle is just absolutely great for different kinds of grips and things like that also the sheath is something that stands out to me as well because it's not difficult at all to get the knife in and out of and it has so many different setups for like scout carry nope. I don't want the straps coming off, so I glued them. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> I was wondering why that snap was a little cantankerous. Yeah. Okay, I, so normally, <laughs> on any normal one, I like to tweak my stuff. It's set up for scout carry or it's set up for belt carry, which I don't like to English. So this is perfect. I like things to be kind of hard set to my waistband so that I can pull it without having to pull up a huge dangler. But scout carry, I like this scout carry setup because you know, it's to the belt like this and it's straight. It's not 45 or any kind of angle like that. And plus at night when I want to take off my um, knife, all I got to do is pop these, slip it right off, and I'll take off my belt. That's like crap. one of the only knives I think I've ever had where I was like, I like the sheath as it is. I don't want to go get it kydexed or anything like that. Right. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice sheath, definitely. Uh, it's yeah. super cool. Uh, I was like, this is a cool... Wait, what? This is a cool feature. <laughs> well, I don't wear it scout style. You never wear like... scout carry? I, I do. I like scout carry. Boy, uh, hour and 40 minutes goes fast when it's cold. Battery, battery's just about to give out. So anyway, you know, Will just did some stuff with the wood. And generally, a lot of times, I like to hand Will the Bark Rivers because he's the one that's not sponsored by Bark River. And you still got skeptics out there. Granted, when I do a video, if I say something and doesn't reflect everyone else's experience, I'm gonna catch hell for it. So, I mean, come on. That and if it's crap, I'll say it's crap. <laughs> but this one, like I said, this is this is my favorite uh, everything knife that I didn't design. Now, my all-time fa favorite like Grail knife that I have right now is that. Have you have you seen the Honey Badger I got? Yeah. 
Thing's gorgeous. It's like that, the, the acid washed. Thing but is this is light, like Will said. It's not too big. It's not too small. I could do just about everything with it. So when I'm EDC and fixed blades, which I do, uh, this one's nice. I like it a lot. And I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but they normally come with brown leather sheaths. I wouldn't uh, know that. I got this from DLT. DLT's got got the black ones. So I got black hand oil. I just thought it would it would look good. Either one would look good. The brown one looks really good. I've seen pictures, you know, once it's oiled up. But it's a premium knife, so I know for you guys that only have like 30 bucks to spend, it's not gonna work for everybody. But it's nice. This acts. This knife actually has quite the following from people that own it. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's so, nice. yeah, it, this is definitely. I love the my Bravo One LT in crew wear, but once I got this one, this one outranked it. I liked it that much. I freaking love this handle. The handle is awesome. So they've been on sale for a while now, but there's still some there. So I'll put links to. DLT trading and knife ship free in the description box below if you want to pick one of these up. I guarantee you, you will not be unhappy with it. It's one It's one of those. So, you know, I review a lot of stuff that's not mine, the Spark River. You know, some stuff works for me, some stuff doesn't. I love this freaking knife. I freaking love it. All right, guys, so Chris from Prepare My 101 is Will from Manus Outdoors. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Uh, links to everything is going to be in the description box below. I'll uh, be back with another video here soon, so see you then. And hopefully, see you out in the woods. It's my line. <laughs> it's like Walter Matthau right now. It's my line. <laughs>